Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our Premier League team of the season and we're going with our central defensive midfielder. So we just kick things off with uh, Nemanja Matic then. Yeah, Nemanja's quietly had an absolutely outstanding season. Yeah, definitely. Seven assists, um, 73% tackle success rate, 141 completed long balls. He's been absolutely outstanding for Chelsea. Yeah. I know everyone will talk about the next man when we talk about Kante, but Matic has had a very, very underrated season. He's kind of been low key that creative force in the kind of three four two one. Yeah. He's kind of obviously as I said with seven assists, he kinda of gives them a little bit more of an outlet than you would think in an attacking sense. You kind of associate Matic with the Mourinho days where he was the one sitting the deepest and just breaking everything up. Yeah. But that's 100% not what he is. He showed this season he's a lot more of a footballer from deep in that midfield than people thought he was. And he scores some pingers when he does score. What yeah, do you think about the semi-final, sorry. He's, he's, had, <laughs> yeah. he's had a fantastic season again. Sorry, Glenn. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Glenn. <laughs> Obviously, we're moving on to Kante in a minute and I think they've complemented each other really well. But as you said, a big man match size, so he's, he's, he's going to break a play for you all day. But uh, and now I'm just repeating what he said. But the fact that he's got seven assists from that position, and you look at all the other names you have in that list, they're nowhere near it. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't think it like yeah. at all. Like hundred percent. And I think one now I know I think one of his assists might have been I think he passed the ball to Hazard for that goal against Arsenal, <laughs> where Hazard <laughs> went on to be a players. But it still it's still it's still an assist. You still got the points of fantasy. So I'd, I'd claim. Oh yeah, I definitely claim it. If well, I pass the ball dead and has our claim every assist I could get. But I think I think as well the fact that they've they've uh, settled into that three five two formation square three four one one or whatever you want to call it really really well and really quickly. I think the fact that he's got the he's got the three centre halves behind him. Yeah, it gives him that license to go and play, and I think that's why he's got as many assists as he has as well. Yeah, I think they kind of everyone says about the athlete that Kante is, but I think Matic carries the ball very well for them yeah. too, and he's probably. A more accurate passer of the ball than Kante in terms of the side like the hundred and forty one long balls, he kind of gets Chelsea going quickly when yeah. the ball t- turns over maybe from a Kante interception or from one of his fifty interceptions this season. Yeah. I think he's pretty vital with that. Well, but well, 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 the player of the year, yeah. Well, I just I think it's bizarre how he's player of the year when I think Matic has been better than him statistically. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, because he's won the league at Leicester and there's so much hype hype around Kante. And uh, yeah, basically, he's got uh, thirty four appearances, one goal, one assist. But uh, his tackling stats are are, are are something to be admired. Yeah, I mean. like you look at it, and he's got one hundred and twenty four tackles this season in thirty four games, which isn't exactly bad. But the one thing that stands out to me with Ngolo Kante from a negative sense is he only is successful with sixty four percent of his tackles, and I know he makes a lot more than maybe Matic does or any other midfielder on this list, gay apart that he doesn't actually, you know, win that many of his challenges. Like, he only has won 29 50-50s this season, which yeah. is not exceptional for a player who apparently is this brick wall and is the, you know, reincarnation of um, Claude yeah. McAlady. He's, uh, yeah, he's not that. He's a good... Kante is a very good footballer and he's been very influential for Manchester City, or for Chelsea this season and Leicester last season, obviously, but... He seems to me like one of them players who's just going to peter out in a couple of seasons. People are going to find him out and figure out what his weaknesses are. And I think he's a bit indisciplined. He's very good with inter- to... interceptions, though. He's got 82, which is the most of any yeah. defensive midfielder. But I think with Chelsea going to the Champions League next year, I think he's going to find it a lot more difficult against a really exceptional level of player. Yeah, because when you look at him in the Euros, I mean, he didn't do that much for France. No, they kind of t- they actually took Kante out of the team yeah. with France and they kind of improved as a side when they brought in Musa Sissoko of all people for Kante who <laughs> um, actually had a better time of it but we move on I'm not saying him. that because he rejected everything I was delighted with that by the way yeah he's got the better player in my yeah. opinion anyway, um, yeah we'll move on to uh, Victor Wanyama of um, Tottenham fame and he's quietly gone about as well I think in a similar way to Matic where everyone looks at Christian Eriksen and Dali Ali and Hingman's son and Alder Verald at the back as well I think Victor Wanyam has been absolutely exceptional yeah he gets overlooked I have to say oh, he's, yeah. he's done he's done phenom- phen- uh, can't even get the word out anymore phenomenal obviously and just again a player that that really has been so influential to us, the Spurs and getting yeah. them playing and that and I think it's just when you when you break it down position by position, it's not been all Ali, it's not been all Kane, 
No. It has to start from somewhere. Yeah. And from, from a man like Wanya Amin can obviously break up play. Um fairly or unfairly. Also, 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 also he's got hundred and eight <laughs> accurate long balls too, so yeah. Like when, when, when spores do break he's generally yeah. the one supplying the service for, for them to break. Yeah, and I think like as we mentioned with um Kante there a second ago, Kante only used sixty five percent success rate with his tackles. Whereas Wanyama has sixty nine percent. I know Wanyama's only made ninety to um Kante's over a hundred tackles. Just but, a couple of red cards as well. <laughs> yeah, he's just a He's actually only got one this season, which is better than his four last season. <laughs> but I think I think Victor Wanyama has been pivotal to Tottenham and I think he's a more he'll last longer as a top player, I think, than Ngolo Kante will because I think he's a bit more of a disciplined in his positioning. He's yeah. not around the defensive midfielder. Yeah, he can pass the ball. But he does score goals as well. He did yeah. score against you know there the other day. Cracking he's big, hair, big lad. He was being marked by old man Wayne. So don't slag Wayne. Really. <laughs> I'm not slagging off twenty eight year old. The man Wayne is coming really. home. Um, the next one, solicitors. Let yeah, we'll move on to his, uh, his midfield partner, who I think is a very, very underrated player, and seriously gets very, or gets very seriously overlooked a lot of the time. Yeah. Because he doesn't score a lot of goals and a lot of people say it. Like Even for Damien Duff to put him in his uh, all-time 11 alongside Roy Keane speaks volumes about how good of an actual player he was because yeah. he played with him at Fulham. And if you think about it with Fulham, he puts him in there in midfield. If you remember with Fulham for a time, especially when Dembele actually kind of really broke through, he's basically playing as a striker. So he's just so versatile in the fact that he can play as like really far forward. He can play in that kind of two that he's playing in with Spurs. Things that stand out to you though is... Um, he's won seventy eight fifty fifties this season. He's completed or completed seventy or eighty six percent of his tackles no, this phenomenal. season. And for me, anyway, then is the best central midfielder in the Premier League. I think he's genuinely that good. Yeah, that he's just as a passer of the ball, he very rarely gives it away. He's, he's so, so good at strong. Protecting yeah, he's it. so classy with it, and he kind of he's one of few central midfielders, especially who play deep in the Premier League, who when he gets the ball. The player coming come to press him just doesn't know what he's going to do. It's not as if he's just going to pass it to his fullback or he's going to try and play it long to a striker. He's going to try and play it back to a central defender. He could do all that, but he could also turn you with a Cruyff turn at the same time. Yeah. He's just such yeah, a classy player. You can't get near him. Yeah, he's just such a classy he's player. To play against he moves him. in lovely pockets of space as well. Yeah. Well, we'll move on to uh, Fernandinho. Yeah. Um, he's a bit of a loose cannon. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. And kind of to put him in as a defensive midfielder. Um, he's too rash for me that's where he plays but he's played right back for them as well this season yeah. and he's kind of he's too rash for me yeah he's he's he, a decent player fine strike of the ball he does score some some, some decent goals when he gets on the score sheet um, but like he loses it at times as he's shown earlier in the season like he's yeah. just a, he's an excellent way to happen as in a red card it's not exactly Sergio Busquets either but I don't think no. where the other be keeping him around for very long as well as a pivotal part of the team anyway like look there was a season with Barcelona with Sergio Busquets in all competitions where he had just done their 200 interceptions and Fernandinho was 62 this yeah. season which shows that see you're trying to play in the same way and teams when they're attacking against it you're breaking quickly and he just doesn't look the player who was going to break up that play yeah. consistently for them well, he and does... he's not good enough on the ball either to be I think a long term fix in Guardiola's yeah. system. But he does have seventy nine uh, successful tackles. Yeah. And a sixty eight uh, percent uh, success rate of tack of tackling. Yeah, but only winning twenty twenty eight fifty fifties in the entire season as well, which they're vital for a player who plays in the team with a lot of possession, I feel. Yeah. Because it's teams coming on the break and you're going into maybe a breaking ball that's coming forward for a striker or a winger that's running into it. And you have to factor that in when you're looking at a player like Fernandinho. He's not going up in a lot of his 50-50s against Moussa Dembele or Wanyama or Kante or Matic. He's going up against smaller attacking midfielders, maybe a Manuel Lanzini from West Ham or whatever. He's going up against those players in his 50-50s and he's still not winning them, yeah. which would be a big worry for me if I was a Manchester City fan. That would look like a big hole in their team for me. He's a functional footballer and I think he's always been a functional footballer at Shakhtar as well but I don't think he's ever been exceptional and he definitely hasn't had okay. an exceptional season for yeah. so City. keeping it in Manchester anyway yeah. we'll, uh, we'll move across the way there to uh, Ando Herrera who again another quiet, quietly surprising 
uh, season has six assists. Yeah, has uh, just one less than Matic, like from the uh, uh, as a defensive midfielder. But he, I think he's more of an all round midfielder. Yeah, well, than defensive. I think the game that stands out for you watching Ander Herrera this season, and I think anyone will kind of say that if you look at Herrera's season, is what he did Eden Hazard for ninety minutes against Chelsea. Yeah, which was and one he scored of, a goal too. Yeah, which was one of the finest and um, had the assist for Rashford too. Yeah. So had just one of the most phenomenal games you're going to see from a central midfielder all season. Um, he completes you know seventy four percent of his tackles, as you say, the six assists. 84 tackles so far this season as well and for all intents and purposes and all rumours and everything as well he's probably you know it's captain next season yeah, which kind of shows kinda hard to argue how that. much of an influence he's had in that team I think he's absolutely exceptional I think he's a steal at the money they paid from from Athletic or Athletic Bilbao and he's probably been the best I think defensive midfielder individually in the league this season I know you know he haven't had the greatest of seasons but He's been exceptional in central midfield. A man who's had a great season and has had it in that crest and that shirt is Adrissa Gana Gay from being relegated last season with Aston Villa to really reviving Everton's midfield from the broken mess that Leon Elsman left behind. I feel, <laughs> I, feel, I feel bad for Elsman there. Come on. He, he, he oh, no, I'm not saying he wasn't a bad player. He was a bad player or anything, but you've upgraded. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, put it this way: if you put him in in, in the Chelsea team, he's player he's player of the season. Yeah, because he had uh, the most interceptions and most tackles uh, for most of the season. He was away on African Cup of Na- Nations for almost a month. Yeah, comes comes back and he was still top of that uh, top of the sp- stats. And everyone goes on about Conte, but yeah, he was still playing in all these games. Yeah, uh, he's been phenomenal. There's been uh, one or two games where he hasn't been at the races, but uh, between him, him and Schneiderlin together, Schneiderlin's been phenomenal since he came in as well uh, as as a defensive midfielder. But anyway, we'll keep to he hasn't played enough games, so we'll keep to to uh, Ghana or Gay or whatever you want to call him. Yeah, uh, okay, so maybe Michael. Ghana Gay, we'll call him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, he's been my favorite player, ever, uh, favorite Everton player this season. Yeah, I just think he's just so good. He just he was his class about him. And you know, I didn't think he could play ball as, as well as he could, but he 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 moves the ball well. He has a uh, ninety five accurate long ball passes. He's one hundred thirty four tackles, seventy three percent success rate in that. And you know, Conte's got one hundred and two tackles. He's yeah. played two games more, and and uh, he's got one more interception in those two games. Exactly. So. I just think he gets another one who gets overlooked a bit like Dembele and Wanyan. Yeah, I think to be like to be honest, as you said, Gay would probably be player of the season in that Chelsea team, and it's really hard to disagree with it, especially when you look at his stats. So, one hundred and thirty-four tackles, it's a lot more than Ngolo Kante has made, and at the same time, he's completed or been successful with seventy-three percent of his tackles this season, yeah. which is nearly ten percent more than Ngolo Kante. Which yeah. that can't that can't be sniffed at. That's yeah. absolutely exceptional, especially for a man who plays in usually kind of a three man midfield. I know when he's played with um the wing backs and three at the back, he kinda of played in the two for a while, but yeah. a lot of the time he's played in three. And for that, to have more tackles and more or and the same interceptions when you're not gonna get in the same positions as Kante, it's phenomenal from him. Yeah, I think Kilman had a huge challenge in coming in the summer and trying to revitalised that Everton midfield I know we joked about Leon Osman or whatever you had the place Gareth Barry in there but really there was no kind of dynamics to the side yeah. where now you've got Adrisa Gay who we've probably got one of the best midfielders in the, in the Premier League now, now definitely now, yeah because yeah. you've, you've got Gay who can cover a lot of ground make a lot of tackles can play, play a little bit of football Mo Best is just there too lads and yeah, uh, he, yeah. if he's not injured he is a very good player yeah and you've got Tom Davis in front yeah. of that as well who's a phenomenal little player. I think it was everyone's future. I think, very, I think <laughs> it was very unlucky not to get into our attacking midfielders. I think we yeah, were a bit I, was, I think we I think we just had too many. Yeah, uh, if we were to put a young player of the year, it'd probably be him. Yeah, for me, probably the yeah. years. I know you've Daddy Ali there as well, but Ali's more. Of, I think young player of the year. Should be <laughs> Ali can't be the pick and the young player. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that I think with Ali as well. Like you look at him and he's kind of played the season now, and this is Davis's yeah. first season, but. You know, I think he's definitely going forward. He's going to be really, really good. Yeah, like now another player in the second season in 
the second season in the Premier League now is Emery Chan. His third, is it? No, second season. He's not. No, there. sorry, going into his third. Yeah, we'll be going there. in for his third yeah. next year, but second season in the Premier League this year. He's had a quietly good season five goals and two assists. And that goal against one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> that, yeah. That. So good. He scored some very good goals this year, he really has, and I think five, I think that's probably the most of Baron Matic, is it? Um, no, it's the most goals of any player on our list. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, fantastic. I think he's probably got the license to go to go forward a little bit more. I think yeah. um, Jurgen Klopp really hasn't played with a, a defensive midfielder as such for a lot of times during the season. I know Lucas has done it once or twice, but in no, he's slagging Leon Osman, which is time. <laughs> in relation, Lucas is a top quality central defender in the Premier League. In relation to the way Liverpool have set up, but yeah, and um, aside from the from the wonder goal against Watford, a lot of his goals have, have been him travelling from deep and scoring goals from outside the box and yeah. I think that's where Chan has been most effective from and unlike when Brendan Rodgers was manager at Liverpool, he's not been playing left back, he's not been playing in three at the back. He's he's really found his kind of natural position in the in in three in the middle and I think that's that's why he's really flourished and that's definitely why he's got five goals. Yeah, another and just another player apart from Chan that I wanted to mention, we were going to put him on the list because I wanted to vouch for him, but when you look at his stats, they don't add up. But um, a player doesn't get talked about much. Luka Milovievic from Palace, I think, has been exceptional since he's come you in. You are obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> since he came in in January, he's been absolutely exceptional. I think he's been absolutely quality for Palace since he came in. If it's named in any bitch, you won't care. <laughs> no, let's, let's be fair here. If it was an Iski or you know <laughs> anything like that, if we were going Polish, I'd like it as well. But uh, Milovie, which has been, um, I think, it's really important for Palace in the second half of the season. He's not, obviously not going to get in the team of the season, but I think next season he's definitely one to watch out for. I'm just laughing at your phone. <laughs> he's not from Poland. He's Serbian. <laughs> All right, we're happy to leave it on that note then. Yeah. Um, All right, if you if any of you guys feel like uh, you want to get involved and if there's a player that we you think we missed out on, let us know. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and just end the video.